Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. If you are looking for home style food made ketogenic that the entire family will enjoy, then you've come to the right place. Tonight we are going to be making keto granola bars. So come along with me and let's get started. We have sampled and enjoyed a lot of ketogenic ready-made granola style bars in the past, um, both from other companies and from the Keto Crate. But I had some extra things in my pantry that I wanted to use up, some nuts and seeds, and I thought about trying to create a homemade granola bar. And so that's what I have done here. It's very easy, it only has a few ingredients, and it only bakes for 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are going to need to bake these at 300 degrees. You are also going to need a parchment lined baking dish, mine is eight by eight. The reason that I'm suggesting parchment lined, you can see here that I have mine clipped to the inside is because after these granola bars have cooled, you'll be able to just pull the parchment paper out and cut them much more easily. So I definitely recommend it. If you don't have parchment paper, you can probably still get it out of your dish, but it's so much easier for cutting, especially if you want to section these off into bars, which I plan on doing. First step that you're going to need to do is to pre-prepare your nuts and seeds. So I have my mini food processor here. Any kind of grinder, you could of course chop everything up by hand or in your blender if you don't happen to have a miniature food processor. Ours is always linked in our Amazon list. I've had this one for a number of years and it's still going strong. So the first ingredient that I'm going to be putting in is coconut flakes. So you want to make sure that your coconut flakes are unsweetened. That's very important because they do sell the sweetened kind in the grocery store as well. Now mine are already fairly fine, but I am going to whirl them just a bit. Now, even though this has coconut flakes in it, it really doesn't provide much of a coconut taste. So even if you're not much of a coconut fan, CJ is not, it really provides more of a texture than a taste. So we want one cup of this. And I'm just going to give this a quick blitz. Now, if you happen to find the larger coconut flakes, you might need to do it just a bit more than that because they do sell coconut flakes that are quite a bit larger. So into our bowl. The next thing that I am using is almonds, and these are roasted and salted. If you wanted to use raw nuts in your granola bar, you absolutely could. I happen to prefer roasted and salted nuts in almost every recipe that I use because I like the umami flavor that a bit of the roasting and the salting provides the nuts. So I'm going to be using roasted and salted nuts for the whole recipe. You need one cup of almonds. And I just want to show you the texture. And this is what you're looking for in your granola bar, is we have some pieces that are a bit finer and then some pieces that are a bit more chunky, which is very traditional in granola bars that are homemade. Now the next nut is pecans, and I'm going to be using my better roasted pecans because I generally have these on hand. They're my very favorite snack. And you want a half a cup of these done in a similar fashion as the almonds. Into our bowl they go. Now the next and final nut that we are going to be putting into our granola bar is pumpkin seeds. I have become 
extremely fond of pumpkin seeds in about the last year or so. I'm able to find mine at Albertsons and Safeway. You can also buy them online. You could also buy them um, in bulk. A lot of stores also carry them in bulk. And you're going to need a half a cup of these as well. Now after I blitz these, I will probably sprinkle in just a few whole ones as well into my nut mixture, simply because I like the look and texture of a few whole pumpkin seeds. So once again, that's a half a cup. So you can see the texture of our granola mixture. And if, if you were just looking to have some kind of granola, this would also be a good first step. So like I said before, I'm going to sprinkle in a few whole pumpkin seeds just because I like the look of them. But you can do whatever you would like. Now you could absolutely utilize other nuts in this if you were more fond of some other kinds of nuts. Uh, peanuts would work here or walnuts would also be excellent. Brazil nuts, pretty much any of your whole roasted nuts would work very well here. So the next thing that I'm going to add is an optional step, but collagen really helps with the binding process in granola bars. So I'm going to be using Perfect Keto Collagen here simply because that's what we have on hand. I'm going to be using the vanilla flavor. You can use any kind of collagen that you have. Any flavor would work because you're not really going to taste the collagen. It's going to assist in the binding process. And of course it does add wonderful healthy proteins and everything that helps give you all the benefits of collagen for your low carb lifestyle. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of this. And I'm just going to use the enclosed scoop because it's fairly close to that. I'm just going to combine that. Now our last dry ingredient is also an optional thing, but I really happen to enjoy cinnamon in my granola bars. And so I'm going to put in a few sprinkles of cinnamon here. You could add other spices that you enjoy. If you wanted this to be a sweet and savory, you could use cayenne pepper or something like that if you want it to be kind of, you know, hot, hot and sweet. So, but I'm going to be putting in cinnamon, a couple of dashes. <clears throat> okay, so we have our dry ingredients for our granola bars, and I'm just going to set this aside while I work on our caramel sauce, and that is going to be what binds our granola bars together when they bake. So you are going to need a medium-sized saucepan. And into the saucepan, you are going to put one stick of butter. So that is a half a cup. If you need metric measurements, those are always listed on the blog. So we are going to begin melting this stick of butter. So you want it on about medium, medium high heat. You don't want your butter to scorch, but we do want to get it melted and heated thoroughly. So our butter is almost completely melted. To that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of brown sugar alternative. You can use any brand that you would like. I'm using Sucrine Gold this evening. And you are basically just looking to dissolve your brown sugar alternative into your butter so that it makes a nice, rich, caramely looking sauce. It only takes a minute or two, and you definitely want 
to basically whisk it the entire time you're standing here for that one minute to make sure that your sauce does not scorch. Now doing this with your brown sugar alternative, because it's a granular product, it helps ensure that you release all those granules and make them a lot more smooth. Okay, our sweetener is dissolved, so I'm going to remove this from the heat. We have two remaining ingredients to put into our sauce. The next one is a third of a cup of powdered confectioner's sweetener. This is natural sweetener. I'm using Swerve tonight because that's what I have, but you can use whatever kind of powdered sweetener you have. Now, if you were going to use a granular product, you would probably want to cook it a little bit longer to release the granules like we did with the brown sugar alternative. So that is, and you just want to stir it into your already warm sauce, and the confectioners will melt a lot more quickly than if you were using a granular product. And you can see that it's becoming a smooth caramel sauce. So the final ingredient that we want for our binding sauce for our granola bars is some vanilla extract. Now you could use a different flavor extract if you wanted. Um, if you have purchased the butter pecan extract for some of our previous recipes, that would be ideal here as well. Or maple, any kind of extract that you like, even almond would be good. But I'm just going to be using vanilla and I'm just going to put in a couple of teaspoons. But do that for your preference. going to whisk that in once again. Okay, so there's our beautiful smooth binding sauce. And now I'm going to pour this over our dry granola bar ingredients. So I'm just going to pour our sauce in and use my spatula to get it all out of the saucepan. Now I'm just going to start stirring it all together and binding all of our dry ingredients. Now I would like to make a note here. Please do not try to use allulose or boca sweet for this recipe. I do enjoy and use both of those products on a regular basis, but if you try and use one of those type of sweeteners, in this step, your bars will not cook in the oven. They will remain in a soft set state. So if you're looking for a hard, crunchy granola bar, then I would definitely recommend using erythritol or some other similar sweetener for this. Okay, so we are thoroughly combined. And now I'm going to press this mixture into our baking dish that we have prepared with parchment paper. I'm just going to put it all in the center and spread it around as evenly as I can. And just do your best. These are, of course, homemade, so they're not going to be store-bought conveyor belt perfect, but that is just fine. We are not striving for perfection here. These are home style recipes. Okay, and I have pushed them down so they are nicely compacted. And you can see all of our beautiful nuts and seeds there. So we are going to bake this at 300 degrees, which is a fairly low temperature because we're looking for low and slow here. We don't want these to get overly brown, just a little bit. So about 25 to 30 minutes is ideal. And then we also need to let these cool for about the same amount of time before we try and release them and cut them into bars. So into our 300 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes.
Okay, they are ready to come out of the oven. They've been in there for 25 minutes. So we need to let these sit here and fully cool, which will take at least a half hour. And then we can take the clips off and release the parchment paper for cutting them into our granola bars. Okay, so I'm going to remove the parchment paper out of my baking dish. It has nicely come away from the parchment paper. That's what's so wonderful about parchment paper. So you can cut these in however large a chunk that you would like. This should make about 10 to 12 bars, depending on how large I cut them. So I'm going to make one cut down the center. So there they are. There are beautiful homemade keto granola bars. There they are, our delicious keto granola bars. Ready for CJ to taste. Hi. Hi. Are you ready to taste our homemade keto granola bars? Yes. All right. Look at it. Crunchy. Lots of flavor. I don't taste any coconut. And I get the cinnamon. Really good. Yeah, I like them. Good. Look like they look like they were they look like they were easy to make. Yes, and you could definitely, you know, put other things in there if you wanted to. Other ingredients. Yeah. Well, good job, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hordes of people trying to get toilet paper. Why? Hordes of hordes people? Hordes of people. Angry hordes. Mobs of people. Toilet paper mobs? Yes. And water mobs. Wow. I wonder if there's a meme somewhere out there about toilet paper and water hordes. I don't know. But your man did that. <laughs> Thank you, my man for braving the wilds of Costco for me. Let's do this. <laughs>